Hello, Paramedic Hankins here with a, another trench video. This video is just kind of on your, your initial scene arrival to a trench. You know, if I'm, uh, say I'm on ladder 5-3 and I arrive to a trench, uh, you know, possible call, we're gonna arrive, you know, make a report over the radio and, uh, you know, designate, you know, ladder 5-3 has arrived. Uh, we do have somebody waving us in. We may have a trench uh, rescue here. You know, we'll be out to investigate, have all other units hold short. We're going to get out and make contact with uh, the site competent person. You know, at which point, uh, you know, likely he'll he'll direct us right to the trench. At that point, I'm going to get out of the uh, heavy rescue. Might bring a tape measure or some other equipment, but basically, I'm going to make a quick assessment. Do we have somebody in this trench that needs rescue, or do we not? And if they are in there and need rescue, to what degree? You know, begin to perform our risk versus benefit analysis. So, uh, as that person directs me to a trench. First thing I need to, need to do is get eyes on it. So I'm gonna come with a partner. We're gonna stay uh, safely away from the trench edge. We're gonna look down and verify the presence or absence or condition of a, a victim. You know, Halcro is looking at this trench. Uh, your side of the trench looks solid. I don't see any sloughing, it looks nice. How about, uh, how about here? Your side of the trench looks good. Sheer walls, no sloughing, it looks stable. So we're using two people uh, because this section of the trench right here, I cannot see myself. I want to stay away from that trench as much as possible and similarly he cannot see the trench area that he's standing near himself so I'm looking at that trench wall and he's looking at this wall so we've made that determination and uh, decide okay there is a there is somebody who needs uh, to be rescued at that point you know we'll, uh, we'll confirm that over the radio we do have a, an official trench rescue and depending on what units I have available to me if I have other units available I'm gonna have them start coming up in this case it might have been heavy rescue 5-3 heavy rescue 5-3 come on up as I'm in this area, I'm also looking for overhead obstructions. Uh, I'm looking at other soil conditions. Uh, any indicators that this trench might be highly unstable. We're considering traffic that's nearby. As far as my heavy rescue coming in, I want to bring them uh, very close to the hot zone. Okay, Remember that hot zone begins at the 50 foot mark away from the trench. And as RO, I'm going to move over or designate somebody to stand in a spot for me and we're going to bring that heavy rescue as close to the hot zone as possible so that we minimize the time it takes to unload equipment. I'm going to try and position that uh, heavy rescue. If you can see it there in the background, we've positioned it where we can easily open up the back and our trench equipment can come off right towards the trench. So uh, we'll bring that in place, get that in, uh, in spot. And from that point, my job as an RO, uh, and, you know, having considered utilities, having considered the needs for additional resources, is now to come to this trench start making a plan of attack and from that point on I'm going to position myself very near the trench and I'm going to just start directing uh, what needs to happen first. You know, make the edge safe, ground pads, ladders, you know, uh, rescuers getting into uh, harnesses so they can make entry, you know, uh, air system set up, strut team set up ready to go and we're going to call those resources and make those assignments as necessary. But as RO I'm going to stay very near the trench and watch, uh, watch these things happen and be prepared to direct people uh, uh, to complete the operation as I've had it planned out in my head. So, all right, that's the nitty gritty on uh, initial RO uh, task.